What up, y'all? It's your boy, Mr. Downtown Ray Mel. You're listening to the Entertainment Report on iHeartRadio, live from Dubai for Friday, October 20th, 2017, delivering some major stories and trends going on in the world of entertainment and beyond. You can follow the show on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, facebook.com slash the Entertainment Report with Ray Mello. That's R-A-Y-M-E-L-O on Twitter at the Enter Report or on Instagram at the Entertainment Report. You can listen to the show anytime you want on iHeartRadio. Just go to iHeart.com or or your iHeart phone app, search for the Entertainment Report, and it'll take you to the page. Alyssa Milano has no intention of stopping the hashtag MeToo campaign. The 44-year-old actress promised on Thursday's episode of Good Morning America to continue the hashtag MeToo movement until sexual harassment and abuse against women stops. She asserted, we're going to be vocal until this stops, not one more, it stops here. Milano reignited the hashtag MeToo campaign Sunday after a number of sexual assault and harassment allegations against producer Harvey Weinstein started a national dialogue. The hashtag calls for people to post hashtag me too if they've been sexually harassed or assaulted to give people a sense of magnitude of the problem milano says i really want this to be about the every woman's voice this is your movement women this is your time and if i can be the vessel and hold the blue horn for you guys to shout as loud as humanly possible then i'm honored to do so she encouraged let's fix this problem hashtag me too has appeared in 1.4 million tweets and 13 million posts comments and reactions on facebook as of Thursday morning. Singer Lady Gaga and actresses Deborah Messing and Evan Rachel Wood are among the stars who have used the hashtag. Wood tweeted Sunday, because I was shame and considered a party girl, I felt I deserve it. I shouldn't have been there. I shouldn't have been bad. Hashtag me too. Milano says she plans to work with activist Tanera Burke, who initiated the hashtag me too campaign in 2007, and the Creative Coalition, an advocacy group in the entertainment industry, to put hashtag me too into action and establish protocols for gender equality and behavior. Channing Tatum is pulling the film Forgive Me Leonard Peacock from the Weinstein Company and it's cutting ties with the production house following co-founder Harvey Weinstein's sexual assault controversy. Tatum was set to produce and direct the film along with partner Ree Carolyn, making them their co-directorial debut variety reporter. Forgive Me Leonard Peacock was an adaptation of Matthew Quick's 2013 novel which follows a high school student who plans to kill his best friend and then himself after being sexually abused. Tatum made the announcement that he is dropping Forgive Me on Facebook Wednesday where he also showed support for the women who came forward stating that Weinstein had sexually assaulted them. The actor wrote, The brave women who had the courage to stand up and speak their truth about Harvey Weinstein are true heroes to us. They are lifting the heavy bricks to build the equitable world we all deserve to live in. He also added, our lone project in development with TWC, Matthew Quick's brilliant book, Forgive Me, Leonard Peacock, is a story about a boy whose life was torn asunder by sexual abuse. While we no longer develop it or anything else, um, anything else as far as the movie is concerned, uh, we are reminded of its powerful message of healing in the wake of tragedy. He also added, this is a giant opportunity for real positive change that we tr- proudly commit ourselves to. The truth is out. Let's finish what our incredible colleagues started and eliminate abuse from our cultural, uh, creative culture once and for all. Tatum said before signing the post with his name and reads... Rose McGowan has canceled all public appearances citing compounding factors relating to the Harvey Weinstein sexual assault controversy. The actress was scheduled Wednesday to receive the Ad Astra Award at the Tall Grass Film Festival in Wichita, Kansas, E! News reported. Less than 24 hours before she was set to receive the award, McGowan informed organizers she would not be attending, stating she is canceling all upcoming public appearances due to the compounding factors surrounding recent revelations in the Harvey Weinstein sexual harassment case. Tall Grass creative director Leah Meadow Connor added in a statement, While we're disappointed that Rose cannot be here with us in person, we understand that her well-being is the priority. We support her and our thoughts are with her. We seize this opportunity to amplify her message and celebrate all the women filmmakers with work here at the 15th Annual Festival. McGowan was also expected to host a screening for her directorial debut, Dawn, at the event. In the wake of her absence, Tallgrass will host a panel featuring female filmmakers titled 
hashtag woke women a candid conversation with tall grasses female filmmakers mcgowan has been at the center of the wide scene scandal as she was among the several women who stated to the new york times that the film producer sexually assaulted them since then more women have come forward and mcgowan's twitter account was temporarily suspended as she was continued to be critical of weinstein his production company and other actors she said were aware of what was going on including ben affleck Mario Roby channels former ice skating star Tanya Harding in a first teaser for I, Tanya. The 27-year-old Australian actress portrays the disgraced American figure skater who was banned for life from the U.S. Figure Skating Association in 1994 for a role in a highly publicized attack on fellow skater Nancy Kerrigan. The promo shows Roby take to the ice as Harding as, as she muses America. They want someone to love. They want someone to hate. It also previews the infamous attack on Kerrigan played by Caitlin Carver. The real life Harding and Kerrigan were to compete at the 1994 U.S. Figure Skating Championship when Kerrigan was attacked during a practice session. Harding ultimately won the event after Kerrigan withdrew due to her injuries. The attack was traced to Harding's ex-husband Jeff Galuli and bodyguard Sean Eckert, who were prosecuted as Harding and Kerrigan competed at the 1994 Olympic Games. Harding later pleaded guilty to hindering prosecution and was banned for competition for life. I, Tanya, it's directed by Lars and the real girl Hammer Craig Gillespie, and co-star Sebastian Stan as Galuli, Paul Walter as Hauser as Eckert, and Allison Janney as Harding's mom, Lavana. The film opens in theaters December 8th. John Bertha now wants to avenge his family in the latest trailer for Netflix and Marvel's The Punisher that announced a release date for the drama. The clip released Thursday ends with the confirmation that The Punisher will launch globally on Netflix starting November 17th. Previously, the streaming service had kept the release date a secret in earlier trailers. Following the shooting tragedy in Las Vegas that left 59 dead and hundreds more injured, Marvel and Netflix canceled a planned showcase of The Punisher at the New York Comic Con and were rumored to pu push back the release date. Bertha now, who played is the title character, also known as Frank Castle, is seen in the in a trailer during his early days in the military, and then seeking revenge for the death of his family after uncovering a government conspiracy. Daredevil star Deborah Ann Wall is also seen in the action-packed trailer as she is reprising her role as Karen Page. The series also stars Paul Schultz, Daniel Welber, Jason R. Moore, Jamie Ray Newman. Michael Nathanson and Ben Barnes. The synopsis reads, known throughout New York City as the Punisher, Frank Castle must discover the truth about injustice that affect more than his family alone. Jordan Peele's breakout horror film Get Out leads all other nominees with four nominations for the Gotham Awards. Get Out received nominations for Best Feature, Best Breakthrough Director, and Best Screenplay, while Danny Kiljula was nominated for Best Actor. Other nominees for Best Feature included Call Me By Your Name, The Florida Project, Good Time, and I, Tanya. Each Best Feature nominee received multiple nominations, joined by Lady Bird in Columbus, with three nominations each, and D. Reed's Mudbound, which received two nominations. The awards voted on by members of the International Filmmaker Project will include television shows for the second year with Atlanta, Better Things, Dear White People, Flea Bag, and Search Party, nominated in the Breakthrough Series Long Form category. John Cameron Mitchell will host the November 27th event that will also include tributes to Nicole Kidman, Dustin Hoffman, Sofia Coppola, Jason Bloom, cinematographer Ed Latchman, and Al Gore. Former Victoria's Secret angel Carly Kloss will host a new series for Freeform. The show titled Movie Night with Carly Kloss will feature the 25-year-old model chatting with pals as they watch different films according to page six. Kloss announced the project Tuesday on Instagram, posting a series of photos on her of herself on set. Her friends and fellow models Kendall Jenner and Ashley Graham appeared in one picture, confirming they will appear as guests on the show. Kloss captioned the slideshow, hashtag Movie Night with Carly and friends coming to your living room this winter on at Freeform. Form. Uh, model Kayla Gerber, the daughter of Cindy Crawford, has teased the series in an Instagram post last week. She told her 2.2 million followers, tune in, hashtag movie night with Carly. The Blast reported Wednesday that actress Rachel Bilson and tennis pro Serena Williams will also appear on the show. So I said that singer Taylor Swift, a close friend of Klaus, politely declined due to scheduling issues. NBA superstar LeBron James and actress Gabrielle Union are developing a new ABC comedy. The 32-year-old Cleveland Cavaliers player and 44-year-old B. Mary Jane Starr will executive produce the series White Dave with producer Maverick Carter and director David E. Talbert, according to Deadline. Talbert, who will also serve as writer based on 
the show on his real life experiences. The comedy follows an African American teenager as he moves from an all white suburban to an all black neighborhood after his mom remarries. Talbert tweeted Wednesday, humble, blessed, excited, yo, at its Gabrielle Yu and at King James Let's Go. The Almost Christmas Helmer further explained the project in an Instagram post where he recounted his childhood in Silver Springs and Capitol Heights, Maryland. The director wrote, okay, so I grew up in an all-white Silver Springs, Maryland, was the biggest, fastest black kid in the neighborhood. My mom remarried and moved us all to black Capitol Heights, Maryland, where I became the smallest, slowest, whitest kid in the neighborhood. He also added, shout out to Ad Gab Union, at Mav Carver, at King James, at Warner Boss Entertainment's at ABC Network for believing in this project. And special shout out to my amazing mother for giving me and my older brother James an eventful and hilarious childhood. ABC has shared on social media two photos from the first table read of its revived sitcom, Roseanne. One image clearly shows the faces of returning stars Roseanne Barr, Lori Metcalf, John Goodman, Sarah Gilbert, Lisey Goranson, Michael Fishman, and Sarah Chalk, along with new members and behind-the-scenes teams who are sitting with their scripts. A second photo captures Barr, Metcalf, and Goodman laughing at the table, while the sitcom's well-known kitchen and living room sets can be seen in the background. The Emmy Women series about a working class Illinois family ran from 1988 to 1997. It's expected to return with fresh new episodes next year. The sitcom's Twitter account captioned the photos. Roseanne is coming to ABC in 2018. Here's a look at the first table read. Big Hero 6 star Ryan Potter has been cast as DC Comics superhero Beast Boy in the company's upcoming live-action series Titans. Based on DC's Teen Titans, Potter joins a cast that will include Brenton Thowitz as Dick Grayson, uh, a.k.a. Robin, a.k.a. Nightwing, 24 Legacy alum Anna Doip as Starfire, and up-and-coming actress Tegan Croft as Raven. The series also cast Alan Richardson and Minka Kelly as recurring characters Hawk and Dove, who have an option to become series regulars in Season 2, Deadline reported. Titans will help launch the comic book giant's DC Comics brand streaming service in 2018 alongside Season 3 of the animated series Young Justice, a prominent character featured throughout the various incarnations of the Teen Titans in comic books and in Cartoon Network's animated series Teen Titans, and Teen Titans Go, Beast Boy has the ability to change himself into any animal imagination. Uh, DC writes about Beast Boy's origins. Uh, Garfield Gar Logan contracted the lethal disease Sakutia as a child while on an African expedition with his geneticist parents. Treated with an experimental drug, Gar survived, but not without developing some bizarre side effects. Along with skin and hair turning permanently green, the wisecracking, fun-loving Beast Boy is able to reshape himself in any animal of any size he can imagine. Potter is also known for starring in Nickelodeon's Super Ninjas and will be reprising his Big Hero 6 role as Hero in Disney's Big Hero 6 The Series. Titans is being written by Acavia Goldsman, fame comic book writer Jeff Johns and Greg Berlanti, who has helped helm the CW's slate of live-action DC programming, including Arrow, Flash, Supergirl, and Legends of Tomorrow. The synopsis reads, Titans follows a group of young soon-to-be superheroes recruited for every corner of the DC Universe. In his action-packed series, Dick Grayson emerges from the shadows to become the leader of a fearless band of new heroes, including Starfire, Raven, and many others. Titans is a dramatic live-action adventure series that will explore and celebrate one of the most popular comic book teams ever. Steve Buscemi is set to replace Owen Wilson as the co-lead of TBS's upcoming comedic anthology series, Miracle Workers. Buscemi will star alongside Daniel Radcliffe in the seven-episode comedy series after Wilson dropped out of the project in August. The series takes place in a heaven-sent workplace where Buscemi, who last appeared on television and HBO's Boardwalk Empire will star as God. Radcliffe stars opposite Buscemi as Craig, a low-level angel responsible for handling all of humanity's prayers, working for a God that has checked out his job to focus on his favorite hobbies. Miracle Workers is an executive produced by Saturday Night Live's Lauren Michaels and created by man-seeking women's Simon Rich, who also serve as a showrunner. The series is based on Rich's book, 
What's in God's Name and was picked up by TBS as part of the upfront slate. Production was stalled after Wilson decided to leave the project and Miracle Workers is currently scheduled to premiere in 2018. Anna Ferris appears to be dating Michael Barrett in the wake of her recent split from actor and former husband Chris Pratt. The 40-year-old actress was spotted with the cinematographer at a local carnival September 9th in Malibu, California, according to TMZ. Sources said the pair met on the set of Overboard, which is slated for release in 2018. Insiders also said that Ferris and Barrett looked like a couple September 23rd at Neptune's Net Restaurant in Malibu. In addition, E! News reported the pair visited Mudu Mio Restaurant and Pacific Palisades twice in in a span of two days. An onlooker said of the first outing, it looked like a date. They were laughing at the table. She looked very happy and had a smile on her face when she was leaving. And I went and said that of the second sighting, it was definitely a dinner date. It seemed romantic in the way they were looking at each other and how they were laughing on the, at the table. Ferris announced her separation from husband Chris Pratt in August after eight years of marriage. The actress shared five-year-old... Uh, the sh- the actress who shares five year old son Jack with Prack said in this week's issue of People that she and the actor remain friends. She says that Pratt will always have each other and be incredible friends. She also added, "There's still so much laughter in our lives together, and he's so proud of me. Still, we watch each other grow, and he still cracks me up all the time. And I think I crack him up, unless he's a really good actor and great at faking laughter." Christina El Musa has reportedly split from boyfriend Doug Speeding. The 34-year-old Flipper Flop star broke up with Speeding amid reports he is seeking treatment for drug addiction issues, according to E! News. Source says Christina supports Doug's decision to seek treatment and remains in contact to support his recovery. The insider said El Musa's friends encouraged her to split from Speeding after his alleged issues worsened this month. The reality star ended their relationship in part to protect her children, daughter Taylor, and son Brayton. The source says Doug has had a huge history of drug and alcohol abuse, and Christina was warned when they first started dating. It had gotten pretty bad this past month, and Christina's friends urged her to end the relationship. The person added she absolutely has no tolerance for any substance abuse, especially around her kids. She's really disappointed and really liked Doug, but this is known uh, she knows this is for the best. In Touch reported Wednesday that Speeding had entered an inpatient rehab facility for alcohol issues. Uh, Musa reportedly urging Speeding to check into the center because she wanted to help. An insider said Christina is the type of person who sees the best side of others, and that's how she was with Doug. Caring about someone does not save someone, and Christina knows that. Uh, Musa was first uh, linked to Speeding. In July, following her split from husband and flipper flop star Tariq El Musa, she and Tariq announced their intent to divorce in December, but will continue to co-star in HDTV's series. Saturday Night Live veterans Andy Samberg, David Spade, and Fred Armisen are among the guest stars booked for Season 2 of Maria Baffert's comedy series Lady Dynamite. The show returns to Netflix with fresh episodes on November 10th. Also expected to appear throughout the series this season are Jason Matanesic, Jenny Slate, Judd Apatow, Judy Greer, and Weir Al Yankovic. A Netflix press release noted, This season finds our precious Maria embarking on her greatest adventure ever love. Maria will use all the wrong lessons learned in childhood as she navigates her new relationship status with family, friends, and pugs. She also lands a new gig at a streaming network that may or may not be owned by Elon Musk. The series also stars Fred Millenmed, Anna Gasteyer, Mo Collins, Mary Kay Place, and Ed Begley Jr. British comedian and actor Ricky Gervais is set to host a weekly Cyrus XM radio show starting next Tuesday. The hour-long program Ricky Gervais is Deadly Cyrus will be broadcast from London. Gervais said in a statement, I started out in radio and Cyrus XM made me an offer to return that I couldn't refuse. With 32 million subscribers, editorial control, my own playlist, and absolute freedom of speech, it's the perfect platform for me and hopefully the listener too. Gervais is known as the creator and star of the original British version of the comedy series The Office. He also starred in the shows Extra and Derek, appeared in the Night at the Museum trilogies and Muppets Most Wanted, and has hosted the Golden Globe ceremony several times. Scott Greenstein, the president and chief content officer at Cyrus XM, says, Ricky Gervais is undoubtedly one of the most uniquely talented comedians in the game. 
whether he starred in the beloved television series, delivered a raucous stand-up before a crowd of 20,000, or skewering celebrities at an award show, the bottom line is that Ricky is a compelling performer whose legions of fans is only growing. We're ecstatic that he's bringing those many talents to Cyrus XM, where he'll tackle some of life's big mysteries while he charms and enlightens our more than 32 million subscribers nationwide. The WWE has announced that tickets to its biggest event of the year, WrestleMania 34, will go on sale starting November 17th at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. The sports entertainment extravaganza will be taking place from the Mercedes-Benz Superdome in New Orleans on April 8th, 2018. The company wrote on Twitter alongside a promotional video that celebrates the city's Mardi Gras culture, the good times we will roll when hashtag WrestleMania comes to New Orleans on April 8th. Tickets will be sold through Ticketmasters with prices ranging from $35 to $1,000. Special Gold Circle VIP packages will also be available for $2,000 that includes seating in the first nine rows ringside, access to the Gold Circle VIP um, stadium entrance, and a commemorative WrestleMania 34 take-home folding chair. Traveling packages will also be available that allow fans to book almost a full week's worth of WWE events around WrestleMania, including the Hall of Fame ceremony, WrestleMania access, convention, and tickets to their weekly program, NXT, Raw, and SmackDown Live. WrestleMania last took place at the Mercedes-Benz Superdome in 2014 for WrestleMania 30. The main event features now current SmackDown Live general manager, Daniel Batista, defeating uh, Daniel Bryan defeating Batista and Randy Orton in a triple threat match to become the WWE World Heavyweight Champion. Michelle Williams was suicidal during the height of her fame with Destiny's Child. The 37-year-old singer struggled, discussed her longtime struggle with depression on Wednesday's episode of The Talk after Demi Lovato addressed her own experience with the mood disorder in her YouTube documentary. Williams says, I didn't know until I was in my 30s what was going on. I just thought it was growing pains. I just thought, I'm turning into a woman. I've been suffering since the ages of between 13 and 15. At that age, I didn't know what to call it. Williams was 19 when Destiny's Child skyrocketed to fame with the album The Writings on the Wall. She says group, uh, the group's manager, uh, Beyonce, uh, Beyonce's dad, Matthew Knowles, didn't understand her feelings amid the success. Star recalled, I'm in one of the top-selling female groups of all time suffering from d- depression. When I disclosed it to our manager at the time, bless his heart, he was like, y'all just signed a million, multi-million dollar deal and you're about to go on tour. What do you have to be depressed about? So I was like, oh, maybe I'm just tired. She shared, it got really, really bad to the point I was suicidal. I was to that point where it got so dark and heavy because sometimes you feel like I'm the provider. I take care of people. I'm not supposed to be feeling this way. What do I do? And I want it out. Williams said she ultimately released her depression, but it hopes to normalize conversations about mental health. She thanked her fans for their support in a tweet Wednesday. She wrote, I'm so thankful for the support. I just ask that the headlines and quotes reflect what I said. I didn't mean, I didn't say what I wanted to get. uh, I didn't say I wanted to get out of the group. And finally, Taylor Swift is gearing up to release a new song. The 27-year-old singer shared a clip from her song Gorgeous Thursday on Instagram ahead of the release of her sixth studio album, Reputation. Swift announced in a company post that the track will be available everywhere at midnight Eastern Standard Time. Gorgeous features a minimalist synthesizer melody and a child's voice saying gorgeous. Reputation will include Gorgeous and the previously released songs Look What You Made Me Do and Ready For It. The album, which uh, debuts November 10th, is Swift's first release since 1989 in October 2014. uh, Swift gave fans a behind-the-scenes look at her Look What You Made Me Do music video this week, but has stayed uh, quiet in the media as she prepares to release Reputation. She'll perform October 1st and December 8th at the the 2017 iHeartRadio Jingle Ball Tour.
And that was your entertainment report for Friday, October 20th, 2017. I'm your host, Mr. Downtown Ray Mello. I'll be back on Monday to deliver some major stories and trends going on in the world of entertainment and beyond. You can follow the show on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. Facebook.com slash The Entertainment Report with Ray Mello. That's R-E-Y-M-E-L-O. On Twitter at The Entertainment Report or on Instagram at The Entertainment Report. You can listen to this episode or any previous episodes of The Entertainment Report anytime you want on iHeartRadio. Just go to iHeart.com. Com, or your iHeart phone app, search for the Entertainment Report, and it'll take you to the page. Everyone have a great weekend. Good night, and God bless you all.